In just a moment, you'll hear James Stewart as the six shooter. There's music for you tomorrow evening with two of your favorite song stylists. First, it's the Dinah Shore Show, and then songs with Sinatra. There's laughter, too, in your Friday lineup with three comedy favorites. The Bob Hope Show with Bob's guest Jerry Colonna, the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show, and Can You Top This? It's a great Friday night program lineup, all of them heard only on NBC. James Stewart as the Sick Shooter. The man in the saddle is angular and long-legged. His skin is sun-dyed brown. The gun in his holster is gray steel and rainbow mother of pearl. Its handle unmarked. People call them both the Sick Shooter. The NBC Radio Network presents James Stewart as the Sick Shooter a transcribed series of radio dramas based on the life of Britt Ponsett, the Texas plainsman who wandered through the Western territories, leaving behind a trail of still-remembered legends. about seven o'clock on a Saturday evening, and I was riding down the east trail that led from Castle City over to Crown Ranch. It's been a real warm day. A little breeze was coming up now, and things were cooling off, a nice, comfortable twilight. I hadn't seen any signs of habitation for the last few miles. The soil was pretty thin and sandy. Probably wouldn't grow much. But a little further on, the ground turned brown, rich-looking. I noticed a frame house sitting back, oh, 50 yards back from the trail. When I was almost even with the house, the front door opened and somebody came running out toward me. Hey, hey, mister, would you hold up a minute, mister? Young boy, it looked like, about 15, 16, wearing blue jeans and a checkered shirt and a little peaked cap pulled down over his ear. Whoa, Scar. Whoa, boy. Whoa, boy. Howdy, son. What can I do for you? You come from town, mister? That's right. You didn't run across Friendly DeWitt on the trail, did you? Friendly DeWitt? You know him, don't you, mister? He runs the traveling mercantile. How's that? Oh, sure. We're too far out to get into town very much, so he brings around a wagon load of goods every once in a while. I I just don't know what we do without him. Well, don't stand out there all night jawing. Just find out about Friendly, like I told you. The gentleman ain't seen him, ma'am. Oh, shut up, Fern. You can wear something else if you have to. Oh! The supper dishes are waiting, Cindy Lou. What what was that she called you? Cindy Lou? But that's a girl's name. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. Oh, in this light here, the way you were dressed, I I sort of thought maybe you were It I don't mean... matter. Thanks again, mister. So long. Ah. Ah, so long. Hmm, Cindy Lou. Hmm. Well, I gave Scar a little touch of my heel. Let's go. Come on. Come on, boy. We started off. I figured I'd had about eight miles to go before I'd reached the Crown Ranch. I, I hadn't been through this part of the country in quite a spell. But I was pretty certain Floyd Prince would remember me from the old days. He'd sign me on for the summer if he had an opening. Come on, Scar. Come on. Come on. It was about 15 minutes later, and I... I came to the fork in the trail. I saw a wagon rolling along from the south. There's some wagon, too. Almost twice the size of anything I'd ever run into before. And the way the canvas bulged out, it looked like it was loaded to the brim. Well, it stood to reason that this was the traveling mercantile that Cindy Lou had mentioned. Whoa, Scott. Whoa, Whoa, Peggy. Whoa, Peggy. Easy now. Easy there. (laughs) Howdy, friend. Good evening. Good evening. You're, uh, Mr. DeWitt, I take it. You take it right, sir, except for that Mr. Part. Just call me friendly, like the rest of the folks. A friend in need is a friend indeed. <laughs> uh, something you needin', mister? No, no. Shoelaces, chewing tobacco, flour, salt, kitchen utensils, ammunition, yardage, zone equipment, anything at all. Just you name it, I got it here in my wagon. <laughs> yeah, sounds like quite an assortment there. Oh, that's only a part of it. 
I didn't even touch on my medical supplies. Oh. Oh, Doc Barstow's painkiller, Seth Simple, uh, all-purpose salve, uh, Miss Jenny's bunion plasters and corn removers. You got any corns that's troubling you, mister? They're just a the thing. No, no, I don't do too much walking. Oh. Some liniment, then? Uh, no, thanks, just the same. I'm in pretty good health. Well, you. what about wearing apparel? I got a full line of Levi's shirts, bandanas, cotton and wool socks. No, I'm just, afraid I'm just not in the market for anything, friendly. I, oh. The only reason I stopped was to tell you that those folks down the trail are getting kind of anxious about you. Folks down the trail? Uh-huh. You know, the farmhouse a couple miles back there. Well, I just can't imagine who you're talking about, mister. I ain't even headed that way. I'm making a delivery over the Davis Ranch near Evergreen. The uh, Davis girl's getting married tomorrow morning. I'm bringing all the paraphernalia for the wedding. You sure somebody in this neighborhood's looking for me? They seem to be. I don't know the family's name exactly. The girl I bumped into is called Cindy Lou. Well, that must be Cindy Lou Ames. But why would... Great yellow pumpkins. Patty Ames. That dress she ordered for her daughter Fern. Uh, what time you make it out to be, mister? I ain't unpacked my shipment of alarm clocks yet. Oh, must be 7.30. Well, know. maybe I can get there before they leave. If I don't, Hattie Ames will skin me alive. Uh, get up, Teddy. Come on now. Come on, Francis. Come on. I knew there was something else. And I was working on that dress only this morning, too. Shorten in the hem. So long, mister. Hope you enjoy the square dance. Dance? What are you doing? Come on, Scott. Come on, Dan, what are you what are you talking about? Well, that's where you're heading, ain't it? The town ranch? Yeah, as a matter of fact, it is. But I didn't know about any dance or anything. I was going to ask Floyd Prince for a job. Well, you mean tell me you ain't heard about the celebration tonight? No, not a word. Well, it's a count of Floyd Prince's son. He just come home from school and back east. Why, you mean Monty Prince? Yeah, that's the boy's name. You know him, mister? Oh, I used to. He was just a little shaver then. He's all grown up, huh? Well, he must be 20 or so, somewhere along in there. I guess he'll be taking over the crown one of these days. I see. Well, I reckon better put off my job hunt until some other time. I I wouldn't want to bother Floyd to give him a party. I'll, I'll ride along with you for a spell, friendly. Well, if you're an acquaintance of Floyd Prince's, I imagine you'd be more than welcome at his party. Practically everybody in the neighborhood's been invited. Maybe so, maybe so. But fact is, I'm not too good at square dancing. I don't know, but there's just something about my legs. A little too much of them, I reckon. <laughs> Well, I just hope you're the only absentee. Well, uh, what do you mean? Well, I had his daughter Fern. She was planning to wear this here dress her mom ordered from me. Oh. Yeah, oh. like it's not she's having a tantrum right now. She sure takes after Hattie. She does, huh? Yes, sir. And mind not delivering her outfit on time, well, there'll be real catastrophe. You see, Hattie's aiming to marry her Fern off to this young Monty Prince. And she'll probably manage it, too. Hattie usually gets her own way. Uh-oh. Look over there, mister. Hmm? Uh, buggy coming up the trail. That'll be Hattie and Fern on the way to the crown. Yeah, I wouldn't be a bit surprised. Well, yeah. it's too late to do anything about the dress now if they're started off. Yeah, the best thing for me to do is to stay out of sight. Uh, I'll get my wagon over here under these trees here. Well, but... Easy, Francis, easy now. But, oh, but what do you... Easy. They're bound to see you sitting there. Oh, anyway. you don't know Hattie Ames like I do. What do you mean? Why, well, she's as nearsighted as a buffalo. Can't see her hand in front of her face unless she's wearing her bifocals. Oh. Uh, and she won't be wearing them either. Not if she's heading for Shindig. Well, what about the daughter? Well, I told you, Fern takes after her mother. She's as blind as a bat without her spectacles. I see. Uh, sh- sh- here they come. <laughs> there, there. What did they tell you? Oh, dog <laughs> gone. They never even glanced over towards us, did they? No, nope, not a glance. <laughs> well, I guess I might as well mosey over to the Davis Ranch. Nice meeting you, Mr. Uh, Mr., uh... Oh, I'm sorry, friendly. I meant to introduce myself. My name's Ponsett, Brick Ponsett. Oh. Oh! Why, Mr. Ponsett, I... I didn't recognize you. Oh, no reason why you should, friendly. No reason you should. Well, I heard so much about you. And that gun. Here, Mr. Ponsett, here. I, I got me some samples of a new hair tonic. Smells real elegant, too. Uh, maybe you'd like to try it. They say it'll grow fuzz on... <laughs> Not that there's anything mad with your hair, you understand? Well, my supply's kind of decreasing. A little tonic might be... Very handy. All right, sir. Just a second now. I got it right back here. Yeah, here it is. Ah, thanks, friendly. My I pleasure, Mr. Ponsett. My pleasure. Will I? Say, uh, I, I just happened to think, uh, what happened to the other daughter? Hmm? Well, uh, that buggy that just went by, uh, there were only two women in it. Now, the girl I met back at the farm, she wasn't Oh, I... you mean Cindy Lou. Well, <laughs> she wouldn't be going to Prince's dance. She, she wouldn't have. No, no. 
You see, Hattie ain't uh, got much use for her. Uh, Cindy ain't Hattie's real kin. She's just a stepdaughter. Oh, oh. Yeah, Hattie and Fern, well, they just seem to go out of their way to make things miserable for her. Uh, like this here dance, for instance. Everybody knows that Monty Prince and Cindy Lou used to be real friendly when they was kids. Well, she'd probably give her eye tooth to go to that part of the night, see him again, but... Well, well it's too bad she can't. Yeah, it? yeah, but there's nothing anybody can do about it. Why, she don't even have a dress to her name. You know, I've got a hunch she'd be real pretty if Hattie ever allowed her to fix herself up. Well, oh, she seemed a mighty nice-looking girl. Maybe. Yeah, she sure is. Yeah. What's the matter? Why shouldn't Cindy Lou go to that dance tonight? With all the stuff in this wagon, I could fix her up so she'd be the prettiest girl there. Oh, maybe you could, friendly. Maybe you could. <laughs> it sure be a good trick to play on Hattie and Fern. <laughs> Why, if they couldn't tell my wagon at 50 feet, they'd never know Cindy Lou when I got done with her. <laughs> Come on, Mr. Ponsett. Why? Well, a girl can't go to square dance all by herself. She's got to have an escort. Oh, I suppose so. But, oh, now, hold on, friend. What, you don't mean me? Well, huh? you're a friend of the princess. You said so yourself. Why, I'm old enough to be her... If fo- we don't hurry, Mr. Ponson, square dance will be all over. Come on. Step lively there, Francis. Come on there, Peggy. Let's go traveling. Come on, Mr. Ponson. <laughs> don't understand, Mr. DeWitt. You, you mean you want to loan me a dress? And all the trimmings, Cindy Lou. Before I get done with you, you'll be so dooted up that your own stepmother won't recognize you. And and you want to take me to the dance, Mr. Ponson? Uh, yeah, sure. That is, if you want to go. Yeah. Well, that, that's right kindly of you both, but the fact is I, I don't have no interest in attending the doings at the Crown. Oh, oh you don't, huh? Well, in that case... I I'm... don't know where you ever got such a notion, Mr. DeWitt. As if I cared anything about seeing Monty Prince again. Well, well, I haven't even thought of him since he went away to school. Not once. Mm-hmm. Well, I... I reckon your stepsister Fern's done some thinking about him. A lot of good it'll do her. Monty wouldn't look to... I mean, it's none of my business, one way or the other. No. No, I guess it isn't. Uh... I'm oh, sorry we bothered you. Let's go, friendly. Okay, Mr. Ponson. Night, Cindy Lou. Uh, uh, Mr. DeWitt. Hmm? Was there, um, something you wanted, Cindy? I, uh, I guess maybe I'm acting kind of ungrateful. I mean, well, you both did put yourself out for me, and it was real generous of you to do it. I don't suppose it would do me no harm to go to that square dance. For a little while, anyway. If you really want me to. Well, now, that's more like it. Uh, let's see now. The uh, first thing we got to do is find a dress. Uh, you come on out to my wagon, uh, Cindy. We, we'll pick something that'll make you look like a princess. Uh, yes, sir, a real princess. <laughs> Well, I want to tell you, Friendly wasn't very far wrong. That's just exactly how Cindy Lou looked when she came out of that bedroom about half an hour later. And for a minute, we just stood there, just not saying a word, just staring at her. Something wrong? Don't I look good enough to go to the dance? Mm, Good enough? (laughs) Why, Cindy Lou, you're you're as pretty as a picture. Ain't you, Brady? Why, she sure is. Well, if uh, you're all ready, Cindy, well... Uh, there's just one thing. We forgot the shoes. Shoes? I don't have any party slippers of my own. Oh. <clears throat> well, uh, well, you see, Cindy Lou, that, that, that's about the only item I don't stock in my wagon. I, well, I, I guess you can make do with the shoes you're wearing, can't you? Oh, oh I don't see how... I... Well, well, look at him yourself. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, no. No, wait, wait. I am carrying one pair of fancy slippers. They're part of the Davis girls' wedding outfit. Well? Uh, oh, no, no. I, I couldn't loan them to Cindy, though. I, I got to leave for the Davis ranch as soon as you two start off for the dance. I, I promised I'd be there first thing in the morning, and it's a good eight hours drive on that wagon of mine. Oh, I see, yeah. Well, it... It was real nice of you both, anyhow. I'll never forget what you tried to do for me and how I felt when I put on this dress. 
How wonderful. Now, hold on, Cindy. Hold on, hold on. It's all right. I, I, just let me do some figuring here. I see. If I was, if I was to leave here by midnight, I, I could be at the Davis place long about 8 a.m. Mm-hmm. That ought to be early enough. Well, there ain't no reason why you both couldn't be back here before 12 o'clock, is no, there? No, no, no reason at all. Well, then I guess the next thing to do is to find out whether them slippers will fit or not. I'll bring them right in. Well, I just don't know what to say, Mr. Pond. Nothing like this has ever happened to me before. It, well, it, it all seems like something out of a storybook. You know, Cindy, I was just thinking the same thing. Well, here you are, Cindy. Try them on. Gee, they sure do look small, don't they? Mm. Yeah? You oh. think you can make it? Oh, I don't... Oh, there. Oh, it is kind of tight, but I... Well, well, try the other one. Uh, <laughs> if you can get one on, uh, the other ought to go, too. Uh, there. Good, good. <laughs> uh, now, are you going to be able to walk all right? Oh, I'll be able to walk all right, Mr. Dewey. The way I feel, I could almost fly. Well, <laughs> then you better get started. You won't have too long of the dance, you know. And don't forget, Britt... You gotta have her back here by midnight. Don't worry, friendly. I won't forget. You are listening to James Stewart as the Six Shooter. The story of Britt Ponsett, the Texas plainsman whose name has become legend throughout the Great Southwest. Now, Act Two of the story called When the Shoe Doesn't Fit. I said Cindy Lou up on Scar, and she managed to seat herself in front of the saddle. I kind of held on to her to keep her from falling off, and we started off for the Crown Ranch. It took us about 45 minutes to get there, and that party was in full swing when we walked into the parlor. Lloyd Prince came over to the door when he saw us and told me we're more than welcome. He's real nice, considering I'd invited myself. I sort of managed to avoid mentioning Cindy Lou's name, and what with all the hub Floyd didn't seem to notice that I hadn't introduced her properly. But Floyd's son, Monty, well, he didn't wait for any introduction. He just took one look at Cindy, and that was the last I saw of her. As far as I could tell, the other girls at the party were just completely out of the picture from then on. I waited until there was an intermission and the dancing, and then I moseyed over to the punch bowl. Oh, can I help you, Mr. Ponson? Uh, oh, I, yes, ma'am, thank you. I'm Mrs. Ames, Patty Ames. Oh, how do, Miss Ames? Oh, third, third, over here, dear. I want you to meet somebody. Oh. This is my daughter, Fern, Mr. Ponson. I'm pleased to meet you, Fern. Well, speak up, speak up. <laughs> Oh, uh, Fern, sort of shy. I, uh, yes, yes, yes. Oh, by the way, um, that young lady that you brought to the party, she doesn't seem to be spending much time with you, does she? Oh, that's the trouble when a man brings a pretty girl to a dance. He's apt to find himself all alone. Fern, stop your fidgeting. <coughs> Of course, now, some girls have character as well as look. All right, come I now. Say. Grab your partners for the next dance. Oh, 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 my goodness. They're starting another dance. Now, Mr. Ponce, don't think that you have to ask my permission to dance with Fern. You just go right ahead. Uh, uh, yes, uh, uh, uh Fern? <laughs> Like I said, I'm not much of a square dancer, but there just didn't seem to be any way of turning Fern down. Well, I guess I should say there wasn't any way of turning her mother down. So, we did our best. Whoop! Oh, oh, sorry, Fern. As the evening wore on, it didn't look like she had any other part lined up. And, well... I figured it was up to me to sort of fill in. Whoop, whoop. 
Oh, I, I sure didn't mean to kick you, Fern. <laughs> There's one thing about her, though. She sure didn't talk a man to death. And somehow the time passed. And the next thing I knew, it was after 11 o'clock. Now, that meant Cindy and I had to be starting home. So I looked around for her, but she wasn't in sight. I excused myself from Fern and headed out to the front porch. Yeah, yeah, Cindy was there all right. But the thing that surprised me was she was all alone. Looked like she'd been crying. Uh, Cindy. Oh, well, Mr. Ponson. What, are you all right? Oh, I'm fine, just fine. Where's Marty? I don't know. Uh, well, maybe you'd better find him and say good night. I never want to see him again. Not as long as I live. Oh, well, what happened? I thought you two were hitting off real good. Uh... I, I thought so, too, at first. While we were inside dancing, everything was just wonderful. And then, all of a sudden, he started acting like he didn't care about me at all. He said he couldn't be spending all his time with one girl. He had to dance with some of the others. Mm-hmm. Well, after all, the party is in his honor. And that ain't all, Mr. Ponsett. He, he didn't even know who I was. Well, didn't you tell him? Well, I thought, sure, he'd know. I, I, I never... Figured he'd forget me, not in just a few years. Mm, well, you've changed, Cindy, and the way you're all fixed up tonight. Oh, that and... wouldn't matter. Not if Monty really liked me. I, I'd never forget him. I'd know him no matter how much he changed or, or how he dressed. Well, all you had to do was just tell him who you were, you know. No, I, I just couldn't. And you mustn't tell him either. You've got to promise me you won't. Now, please, Mr. Ponson. Mm -hmm. well, that's what you want. Well, I, I think maybe we'd better leave. Yeah. Well, I, I'm ready. Uh, you, uh, you got everything? Hmm? I guess so. Why? <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I just thought maybe you'd lost one of your slippers or... My slippers? Whatever gave you that idea? <laughs> I, I don't know. I, don't, I just sort of crossed my mind somehow. <laughs> Never mind. I, I, I'll get scarred. <laughs> Well, it just goes to show you that stories in real life don't work out the same way. Instead of falling in love, Cindy and Monty Prince were just far away as ever, and even farther. And there didn't seem to be any way of getting them together, either. At least ways he wasn't going to be able to do it by finding one of her slippers at the dance, that's for sure. As a matter of fact, she couldn't have lost a shoe at the dance if she'd wanted to. When we got her home, we found out she couldn't even get them off. Doggone it, Cindy, you must not be trying. Well, you didn't have as much trouble getting them on. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. DeWitt. I, I'm doing my best. My feet must have swelled up from the dancing or something. The slippers... Here, just... here, let oh. me do it. Oh, sure. <coughs> Why, they're, they're just plain stuck fast. I know. Maybe in the morning my feet will go back to normal. And yeah. then you... Hey, look out the window there, friendly. Isn't that a buggy out there? Holy smoke. Fern and Hattie. So long, Cindy. Bye, Britt. Oh, wait a minute, friendly. I don't want them catching me here either. But but what about the slippers in the wedding tomorrow? The bride's wearing a long dress, reaches clear down to the floor. She can get married in the bare feet if she has to. Well, well thanks for everything. Good night, Cindy. I'm, I'm sorry things didn't work out better for you, but... Good uh, night. <laughs> Well, along about noontime, the next day, I was in my hotel room, washing up for Sunday dinner. They were uh, planning to serve fried chicken and corn fritters and apple pie. The Castle Hotel always put the food on family style, so I figured I'd better be real prompt or there wouldn't be any... Yeah? Yeah, come in. Oh. Oh, Marty. Oh. What are you doing in town? I, uh... I came to see you, Mr. Ponsett. Oh, is that so? It's about, um... About that girl you brought out to the Crown last night. Well, I sort of had the impression you weren't too interested in her. Oh, I'm interested, all right. I wish I wasn't, but I am. How's that? Well, you see, Mr. Ponsett, before I went back east, I was, um... Well, I was real fond of another girl. Cindy Lou Ames, her name is. 
Oh. And we sort of uh, promised that we'd wait for each other. But last night, that girl with you... Well, she sort of made me forget Cindy. She did, huh? For a while, anyway. And then I remembered, and I I felt real bad, because it it didn't seem like I was being fair to Cindy. So I went inside, and I left the other girl to herself. But doggone it, all night long, I kept thinking about both girls, and they they sort of got mixed up in my mind. I couldn't even keep them straight. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. You've got quite a problem there, haven't you? Yeah. Excuse me. Good morning, Mr. Posset. I finally managed to get... Oh. Cindy Lou. Hello, Monty. Golly, it's good to see you. I was hoping you'd be at the dance last night. Were you? You know, you haven't changed a bit. No. No, I guess I haven't. They're in this paper bag, Mr. Posset. Those things I borrowed last night. Oh. I thought I... maybe you could return them to Mr. DeWitt for me. Well, I'm not sure I'll be running into him again, Cindy. Here, Mr. Ponson. Now, be careful. Don't... Oh, oh, oh. oh Mr. Ponson. Oh, doggone it, Cindy. I just, just sort of slipped out of my fingers. I'm. Well, here, I'll put these party shoes back in the sack. There. Well, Cindy. goodbye and thanks. Goodbye, Monty. Uh, Cindy, wait a minute. What? Where'd you get those shoes? I don't know what you mean. Why, they're the same ones that... They're exactly the same. Cindy Lou, you were at the square dance last night. You and that other girl... Why, there wasn't any other girl. It was you. No wonder I couldn't get you straightened out in my... What are you talking about? Uh, tell her, Mr. Ponsett, what I told you just before she came in. Well, I think maybe you'd better tell her yourself, Monty. As a matter of fact, I'm kind of anxious to get downstairs while there's still some fried chicken left, so... Now, you listen to me, Cindy. I've been in love with you ever since I can remember. I don't believe you. Well, it's true. And it doesn't matter what kind of a dress you wear or how your hair is fixed or... or... (laughs) (laughs) Well, there wasn't much point in my hanging around to see if Cindy and Monty would finally get together. There's only one way a story like this can end. I guess you know as well as I do. They were just bound to live happily ever after. The Six Shooter is a transcribed NBC Radio Network production in association with Review Productions. It is written by Frank Burt and is based on a character created by him. Mr. Stewart may currently be seen in the Universal International picture The Glenn Miller Story. Others in the cast were Barbara Eiler as Cindy Lou, and Eleanor Audley, Sandra Gould, Bill Johnstone, and Sam Edwards. Special music for this program was by Basil Adlam, and the entire production is under the direction of Jack Johnstone. All characters and incidents were fictitious, and any resemblance to actual characters or incidents is purely coincidental. This is John Wall speaking. Hear McDonald Carey in Jason and the Golden Fleece tonight on the NBC Radio Network.